In this interview, I talked to Cameron Shane. Now, he's an expert in yoga and martial arts, and he's the creator of the Budokan system. Now, Cameron's also a highly sought after personal trainer to many Hollywood celebrities, including Courtney Cox Arquette, Jennifer Aniston, and Charlie Sheen. Now, I was so excited to talk to Cameron because he's such an authentic teacher who truly understands the body and its capabilities. He's also very much into strengthening the mind and he's a master at self-discipline. So carry on watching this video and I'll see you guys in the comments. So what's your number one tip then for people that maybe that they're watching this that they can take away and actually put into action straight away to improve their health and fitness? Well, I would go immediately into the direction of something that you that that you love and that inspires you and I would also look for something that that's difficult. You know, you you it is it is not proper to enter into a physical practice looking for it to be easy and doable. You you would enter into a physical practice looking for it to be difficult and challenging and you would show up day after day and learn and if you have a good teacher, you will ultimately be able to execute whatever is being taught. If you have a teacher who is less skilled, then you may never learn that, that practice. So locating an excellent teacher and finding a challenging practice equals, equals you having a passion and, and producing a fruitful, uh, a fruitful practice uh, for yourself for a lifetime. What's the most important thing a beginner can do to actually make their new routine a habit? First of all, it's choosing a practice that they can do, uh, that, that they can go to a, a location, something that's convenient. People won't do that which is too difficult. So choose something that is convenient, local, um, that they're passionate about. Um, put it into your schedule, put your schedule down, make it a priority and make it something that you just can't skip over because you decide you don't feel like doing it that day. Make it something that is, it is, is blocked out in your time. This is what you're doing. And, and, and I, instead of saying forcing yourself to do it, committing yourself to it through action. And the action is putting it in your schedule, paying for your classes up front, like committing to the work through your action. What common mistakes do you see people make when they first start exercising and getting really f serious about fitness? Very, very simple. People move too fast. Uh, speed is the enemy of detail. Speed covers deficiency. When a person moves quickly, they cannot see where they're making mistakes. They cannot see where they're, dis where they're disconnected. And by not being able to see where one is disconnected, one cannot correct. If one cannot see the mistake and correct, one cannot learn. So that's, that's, that's the, the most common mistake that people make. And there's lots of unreliable information on the internet. Are there any myths about fitness that you can debunk for us today? That it's easy, that you're going to get results by, uh, you know, simply doing 10 minutes a day or, or you know, th that, is, that is all just, uh, it's just playing to the weakest or the most, you know, common denominator out there. You know, you're only going to get that which you put put it forth or into something. So uh, 10 minutes a day will give you 10 minutes a day of, of you know, so it's like saying, I'm going to spend 10 minutes today um, on my relationship. Uh, you know, great. Well, you'll get 10 minutes worth of fruit <laughs> from the relationship. So describe your process, the Budokan process, and actually um, the style of this and the health benefits to people practicing it. I would be dishonest if I were to tell you it was an easy practice. <laughs> it is a difficult practice. It takes a lot of strength, uh, not strength from conventional, the con not from the conventional sense of strength, not strength muscularly, how much uh, you know mass, muscle mass one may have, but rather a, a connected type of strength in the body, a, a, an integrated strength like a gymnast strength or a Cirque du Soleil performer strength, the kind of strength where a person has to be connected to their body. Uh, and, and if a person is uh, very, um, very developed in the lower torso, say big quads, strong legs like a cyclist, but they're very weak up top, they're going to struggle and vice versa. So really it's about teaching people to balance out their physical practice and 
uh, what the result is, of course, of that work is that you create uh, something like a, a gymnast, a gymnast type of body, a very lean, strong, integrated, connected, physical body. I find it to be one of the more one of the more challenging practices, but at the same time, one of the more fruitful practices when it comes to creating a a holistic movement practitioner, someone who can truly move hands, feet, full body, um, and, and, and uh, can, can make many choices in their body, can transition from one sport to another sport, from one thing to another thing, and do it gracefully. I, I like to say Budokan doesn't, Budokan doesn't do what you do, but it makes what you do better. So it <laughs> doesn't matter what your practice is, we'll just improve it. Can you recite any inspiring stories then of people that you've actually helped um, improve their fitness in your practice? Well, I receive a tremendous amount of feedback from, from students. I mean, there's, there's, there, I've, I've worked with people who have scoliosis, muscular dystrophy. dystrophy um, uh, I actually work with a number of people with MS. I work with a number of people with spinal disorders. Um, I work with people who, you know, have been uh, traumatized physically, sexually. I mean, I, I work with a lot of people who are looking to heal themselves. And the success rate or the feedback has been tremendous. I mean, I, I but I, I can say that with anything. I mean, anything that a person does and, and that they do with a great teacher, they're going to get successful result. So I, I, I you know, I think Budokan, like many other amazing movement systems you know has a very high rate of success when it comes to helping people with uh, to adjust their phys physiology and also to adjust their psychology we have a tremendous amount of psychological um, work that we do within the system uh, we do a lot of life coaching a lot of, of focus on communication language relationship um, thought process we take everything into account. We look at the totality of the way a person is living their life rather than looking at parts and pieces uh, because that's not integrated. Um, it's not an integrated approach to, to health. What I'm really interested in is if you can take me back to when you first got serious about fitness and tell me how this actually ended up as your career. Well, I started training in martial arts when I was 12 years old. and. It was primarily because I was kind of bullied as a kid. Uh, I was a very uh, kind and, and soft-hearted boy, but at the same time, I was also probably a bit too witty and sarcastic for my own good. So I think I got myself in a good bit of trouble. Um, so I think I was somewhat of an easy target for bullies. And I was, I was determined after one incident that I was going to learn martial arts. I had, I, I, I had loved it and watched it as a kid. My mother and father decided they would sign me up for, for training. And I said, well, whatever you do, you know, don't sign me up for Taekwondo because I, I, a friend of mine who was a black belt, he goes, he goes, whatever you do, you don't want to take Taekwondo. You want to take uh, Kung Fu or something like that. So my uh, 12th birthday comes and my mom and dad, I open my present and it's a, it's a gi. It's, a, it's a, a martial arts gi, and it's a taekwondo gi. <laughs> so they have signed me up for uh, taekwondo classes. Uh, the only the only martial art I asked them not to get me not to not to sign me up for. They and and I said, you know, come on, guys. I you know, I, I asked you guys. You know, they're like, well, it was the closest and the easiest. So this is what you're going to take. So um, you know, beggars couldn't be choosers at that time. So I happily uh, decided, uh, decided to start taking uh, classes, and I, and I don't regret it a bit. It, amazing art, very thankful that I learned that practice, um, taught me a tremendous amount uh, about, about kicking and being an, an excellent um, martial artist in general. Taekwondo is a phenomenal martial art. So after taking a traditional martial arts style like, uh, like the Mudokwan, uh, traditional Taekwondo was, I transitioned into a more uh, sport-oriented style called Olympic-style Taekwondo. 
due to that practice, I became a very, very high level martial artist. It's a very intense, serious, um, uh, you know, athlete. It's an, it's, it's an athlete's martial art. You know, it's it's serious training. Um, from there, I moved into Brazilian Jiu Jitsu and Japanese Karate Do, and rounded out my my game. I'm 38 now, so I started training it when I was 12. And I began teaching right at right away because uh, I, I started going home and teaching all the kids in my neighborhood, the boys, my friends. Um, so teaching was just something that I was very, uh, very, it was very natural in me to teach. 30 years later, I can say quite confidently that I am an excellent teacher. Uh, you know, how well, you know, are there better martial artists? Are there better yogis? Are there better you know practitioners I'm sure there are you know it's 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 never it's you, you can never stay on top uh, physically forever um, but when it comes to teaching and understanding martial arts and yogic arts as a, as a hybridized system I don't think that there's anyone in the world that knows more about it than I do because I pioneered that concept um, bringing those two uh, together in a real system so what do you know now that you wish that you would have known when you were first starting out you know, I tell my students, you don't know how lucky you are because it took me 30 years to figure out a lot of the things that I'm teaching you right now because no one explained it to me clinically. I can say that, that pretty much everything I've ever learned, I've gone in and looked at the blueprint, looked at the real blueprint of, 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 of the movement. And I'm grateful that I, I did that because because I've I failed at so many so many things on the first try which I'm glad that I have then I really learned to go into deep practice and look at the mistakes because within the mistake is where the lesson is and and within the mistake and the lesson is the blueprint of the movement so if you do something effortlessly the first time you oftentimes really truly do not understand its its structural its structural foundation one has to uh, one has to uh, uh, it's like taking something apart and tinkering with it, and it's, if you take it apart and you don't realize how it how it how it was put together to begin with, then you have to figure out how to put it back together. You have to really rethink it. It's it's different than taking it apart, and remembering how it came apart, and then just just through memory putting it back together. That's very different than taking it apart, not knowing how it <laughs> how it how it got together to begin with, and then saying, okay, starting from scratch now. Now you truly understand its structure in a way that you did not originally. Have you learned any secret tips and now that you're a professional something that maybe that you do differently now than you did when you first started out? I think when one moves through something very slowly very thoughtfully uh, unlike I did in the beginning when I was young everything was about speed and power and, and how quickly and how strong so shifting that mindset and moving into a moving into a mindset of play, fun, relax, uh, take your time, really slow down, really, really, uh, you know, have a good time, but at the same time, uh, you know, move at a very, move at a very slow speed so that you, you can feel little successes. You know, you can get these little moments of success and that can keep feeding. It's the fuel that'll keep your practice going. These little moments, keeping that sensitivity and awareness to the growth that you're having, moment to moment. One should really know what one is 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 looking for from from a, an art form what, what am i looking for from this art form it's not i mean if you if you have a, if you have if you come in an art form with uh with an attachment like i'm i'm looking to get something rather rather than that come in the art form and say what kind of fruit does this art produce in people looking at people who practice it noticing what what kind of fruit that is 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 the fruit uh uh more peace and clarity is the fruit more uh, more musk, you know, muscularity. Uh, you know, is the fruit more stamina, uh, cardiovascular? What is the fruit of the work? Kind of getting a feel for what the work produces in a person, so that one can be aware of what one is, uh, what one is seeking.
that's an intelligent approach to looking for a physical practice and also looking for something that really gives a person a well-rounded full physical expression of movement that that is reflective of what the body's capable of the body can jump it can it can uh, spin turn crawl move you need something that really reflects the body's full 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 capacity for movement and what advice would you give people then that break their habit that sort of start off with good intentions and then kind of fall off the wagon how can they get back on track again you know just stop telling stories and making excuses and just just do the work I mean you know I, there's no magic pill this is this is not you know it's 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 there's no such thing as a quick fix if it is then it's not going to fix anything you know uh, um, anything that's anything that's sustainable takes effort and it takes time in in just like a good relationship it takes effort and it takes time put in so if someone's not willing to put in the time and the effort then the, there's nothing sustainable about that that relationship and your your practice is a relationship that you have you have a relationship with your yoga practice or your martial arts practice or, or, or your Pilates practice or your Budokan practice it's it's a relationship and if you're not willing to give it time effort energy you, you, you know you again you will only get from from it that what you put into it so I would tell a person stop telling stories stop making excuses get up off of your behind and go handle your business. I don't want to hear I need to get in shape and I want to get in shape. The only thing I, I, I ask my students is I am getting in shape or I choose to be in shape. But I need and I want are not acceptable terms in, in my world. So when a student comes to me and says I really need to get in shape, I say let me stop you right there. I need a Ferrari. Okay? I need, <laughs> I want, I want world peace. Okay? Uh, I want that oil spill to just stop right now. You know, there are things that, that, that I want and need, but these are deficiencies in the in the language. So I tell people what what let's 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 hear let let your words reflect your actions and let your actions reflect your words. Fantastic. That's a brilliant way to end. That's uh, it's, it's been really inspiring talking to you. You've given us some fantastic content there and I know it's gonna inspire a lot of people. Beautiful.